What's up guys, how's it going? My name is Mike the Tech and welcome to our first platformer tutorial for Game Salad. So um, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to go to File and we're going to go to New and um, we're going to name this Platformer Tutorial. And um, for the platform, let's just go ahead and choose iPhone 5 Landscape. Now I'm just choosing iPhone 5 landscape, not because I'm targeting an iPhone 5, but just because it's a smaller screen and it's easier to work with um, in a recording setting. So it's easy to see without having to zoom in or, or scroll around and look for items. So um, that's just a preference. Now uh, let's go ahead and import some media because we want to get some graphics in. I don't want to make this super plain with uh, just colored blocks. So, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, I really enjoy Kenny.nl. K E N N E Y dot N L, and he's a graphic artist who releases free assets for game design and um, allows you to use them uh, commercially uh, for free. You can change it royalty free. You don't even have to give him credit if you don't want to, though. Obviously, you should, and um, he he appreciates that a lot. He also has paid products, which if you enjoy his products, you should support. Um, anyway, I enjoy his products and I downloaded some game assets which you can download so that you can follow along with me along with the tutorial so we don't have to try and create the same kinds of graphics as we go along. So I'm going to go ahead and go to add assets and um, this is from the platformer characters pack on Kenny.nl and um, there's actually a couple different characters. There's an adventurer, a female character, a player character, uh, a soldier and a zombie um, so all of these have the same poses and um, you can choose whichever one you'd like I'm gonna go ahead and choose adventure just because it's the first one and he looks pretty cool and um, I'm gonna highlight all of the graphics so let's go ahead and highlight all of them perfect now we have all these graphics and um, that's that's just what we want now we also need some platforms because it's a platformer we need some platforms so let's add some more graphics and um, the platformer pack that I downloaded was the industrial pack so the industrial platformer pack from Kenny.nl and um, you can download that and then follow along in the PNG folder uh, let's just go to the default size we don't need retina size for this it's an iPhone 5 let's get um, okay so here's all of the platformer blocks and items and switches and things like that um, we're going to grab this one right here just because it's easy to work with because it can be uh, infinitely long because we have a left side here, a right side here because of this little edge, and then a center block here. And this one can be stretched as long as we need. Uh, if we tried to tile this one or something, we would see a bunch of um, crevices every time it goes through one. So let's use platformer industrial number three. And uh, let's drag this graphic into the scene, which will turn it into an object, or an actor, I mean, excuse me. And then we'll jump over to our actors library and uh, name that actor. And I'll just call that floor. Uh, so the floor is a pretty good size right now. Let's put it down here um, on the bottom of our screen, a little bit off, just to make sure uh, you don't see any edges. And let's drag this out the whole length of our scene. Looks kind of funny, right? It looks all stretched out and nasty. Uh, but don't worry, we're going to fix that. Let's go to Floor, and then go to Actor, and scroll down to um, Graphics. Now, under Graphics, if you expand that menu, you'll see Horizontal Wrap and Vertical Wrap. And this is where you can choose between stretching and tiling sprites. So we're going to use the horizontal wrap and change that to tile. And you, now you can see that as long as we tile this, it will still look how it's supposed to look. So it just kind of expands out with that nice little swirl that it has. Uh, so we'll leave this like this. And um, there's a few steps we have to do to the floor to make sure that um, it works properly in our scene, but we'll get to that later just so you can see what happens if we don't do it. Um, so anyway, now let's go over to our media library again and let's add our uh, player into the scene. Uh, so let's look for an idle animation. So let's look for stand 
and let's drag him in. And he's pretty huge right now, so I think we're going to make him a little bit smaller too. So uh, go to your actor's library and rename him or her player. Perfect. Now, um, for that player, we're going to go to the actor attributes down here. And we're going to change his size because he's kind of large right now. Let's go ahead and make him by half. So 80 um, divided by 2 is 40. And then 110 divided by 2 is 55. And um, that'll make him half size. So just delete him in here. Delete that instance. Redrag the player in. And he is at a much smaller and more manageable size. Or at least a more visual size. So we'll leave him up here. Now, uh, this looks like a platformer. It's starting to look like one anyway, but um, our player isn't supposed to, like this isn't a top-down game. Our player isn't supposed to be standing there. He's supposed to fall. So if we hit play, our player doesn't fall, right? So uh, if we go back to the editor, uh, let's add some, some suede of gravity, right? So let's go to our player and go to our behaviors. And... Um, I'm going to show you guys how to use the accelerate behavior as a gravity mechanic. And that way you could apply gravity to specific actors instead of the entire scene. So let's drag an accelerate behavior into our player. And we want to accelerate downwards. So we're going to accelerate down and use the wheel to kind of estimate at about 270. And uh, let's go ahead and fall down at a rate of 400. That, that seems about right. And we want this relative to the scene. Now, if we made it relative to the actor, if the uh, if this is the player's sprite, um, it'll always fall down. But if the player falls on his side, then um, relatively to the actor, down would be that way. So the actor will go that way. So um, we need it relative to the scene that so that no matter which way the actor the actor is facing, it knows that down is this way, so it will fall downwards. Um, if that made any sense, all my hand movements, I don't know if that helped. Um, anyway, we can name this accelerate uh, gravity. And that just means uh, that's just for organizational purposes, so we can just hide this. Uh, let's hit play and make sure it works. And uh, there's a couple other steps to make this look right, but we'll see what happens right now. And our player falls and falls through the floor. So there's another thing we have to do in order to make him land on that floor. And that's collide. So we're going to go down to the collide behavior. And uh, this says, use the behavior when you want to control which actor or groups of actors to bounce against. So it's a bounce event. So we'll drag collide in here. And we'll say we want to bounce when colliding with the actor of type. And then you'll click this little box to choose what you want to bounce against. And we want to bounce against the floor. And um, and this and we'll name this before we test it just to, to organize. Collide with the floor. So uh, when this happens, it's going to look a little bit funny. And this is the step we skipped earlier. So our player now falls and uh, bounces. But he's not really supposed to bounce, and that floor definitely wasn't supposed to fall away. So um, let me go ahead and go back and show you exactly how to get that to work. So let's go ahead and go to the actors and choose floor. And um, for the floor, you're going to go to uh, physics. And in the physics section, you're going to make it immovable by, by unchecking movable. And I also like to use fixed rotation. It's not completely necessary, but I like to use fixed rotation just to make sure it's not going to rotate. Now, the bounciness, we're going to change that to zero because we don't want anything to bounce um, off of it unless we want that item to be bouncy. So uh, speaking of items being bouncy, if we hit play right now, our floor no longer moves, but our character bounces up and down. Why? Because we haven't edited the physics in our player to say that he is supposed to land with some weight, you know? So let's go to player, and we're not literally going to add weight, but we're going to trick the bounciness side of it you know, thinking there's some weight, right? We're going to change the bounciness from 1, which it's at right now, to something much smaller like 0.2. And, um, well, let's go ahead and choose 0, and I'll show you what happens when we do that. It looks pretty cool. It falls, lands on the floor, and um, stops. And that's normally okay, but I'm all about game feel and making things seem fun and right. 
and uh, dynamics. So I'm going to put this at point two because when he lands, it gives him a little bounce. See, so it, it just makes it kind of funny, kind of like hits and then um, like skids off a little bit. So we'll go back to the editor. And now we have a platform with a character that's affected by gravity with a collision event to stop it from moving. Um, in the next episode, I think we'll go into movement in terms of left and right and um, probably jumping as well. And we'll add some um, platforms to jump onto. Uh, going further, we'll add enemies and um, just a lot more really cool mechanics. So I hope you enjoyed this first episode. And I hope you continue watching. And check out my other game design videos too. And if you really liked it, uh, please support me on Patreon. That would be awesome. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Peace.